kind of a memory, uh, a trip down memory lane. I think I was one of his earliest visitors when the GIIS uh, began in Queenstown. I traveled around the region. Uh, again, I'm very impressed by the contribution you're making. Uh, and I'm therefore particularly pleased uh, that I'm one of your early visitors uh, to this campus. And again, it's natural to reflect on how much uh, the India-Singapore relationship has changed in the last three decades. And this school itself is one, one example of that, that as our connections grew closer, as the community has grown, as India has become more globalized, uh, the uh, ties between uh, India and Singapore have reflected that. Let me start a session by congratulating you on your book, Why Bharat Matters. We're all looking together towards reading this book and understanding your nuanced insights into the way the country is shaping up and moving forward in this digitized economic climate. Now, as India has shown and demonstrated in the IT sector, do we see a similar starting or a beginning for the education sector where Indian education players slash education can play any role in the world education space? I can envisage a situation where Actually, you know, education uh, would be much more transboundary than it has been before, which I think should be good news. You can think of yourself in a way as a pioneer uh, of, of this trend. Uh, but it, it actually signifies something much bigger, uh, which is the idea of the world as a global workplace. Because in many ways, uh, there will be demands for talents and skills in different parts of the world. So I'm actually seeing an interest in the world also today in creating that global, uh, global workplace. And when we start thinking of a global workplace, I think I come back to it again. You know, people are our strength. People are our best resource. I'm a scholar at uh, GIIS and my question is,